my soccer universe and welcome to the Europa League semi-final first leg review. It was not a great evening. Uh, for, for me it has actually nothing to do with the results and I'm still not quite over it. Uh, in fact, let's say it right out, I didn't barely saw anything uh, because I was just too tired from uh, work and so on and I just I lied down and I watched the game. I had to decide on one, which was the first downer. And yeah, midway through the first half, gone. So watching highlights. Uh, so yeah, and I'm still a little bit under the weather, although the weather is really, really nice outside. We have uh, sort of nice-ish morning here. But you know, that's all not soccer related. Let's first talk jerseys. I decided this is probably the last time that I can wear a non-English team in a European competition uh, review this season. So I decided let's go for Villarreal, although I've only one jersey of theirs. And so on the back there, you get all the others. Um, I'm not as good here, so I had to put in two quarterfinals and finals that were beaten with Ajax and uh, Granada and there's a whole lot of Roma jerseys in there, which I'm not sure if I, I think I will, it's um, not too contentious when I say that of all those, uh, Roma probably has the best jerseys overall uh, of the same final five final list. It's my personal opinion. I think Roma has one of the best uh, sets or any time, uh, best color, color schemes to be suited. So. It's nice to have Roma jerseys, although Roma is already out of the competition, more or less, after the first semi-final leg. The ghosts of 07 are coming back. And it looked all so well uh, after 45 minutes. Uh, I think in both games I would have felt more, much more comfortable after 45 minutes. And let me say this, it's not that I'm against English teams at all. Yes. In both semi-finals, I am favoring the non-English teams, but this has, is nothing that I'm against the English teams. It is just, um, I don't want to see another double English, uh, uh, no, two Eng all English finals and uh, finals within one um, nation. Anyway, some, something I don't like that well. And since the Champions League final will be probably deservedly so an all English affair, Affair, an all English affair, and you see, I'm not <laughs> well. <laughs> and Manchester are already prohibitive favorites to win the Europa League. I really want at least one, one team in there that is not. And uh, it, I, I don't dislike Arsenal. I don't. It's just I need to. Uh, I, it, it just does. It just doesn't seem right that we have four teams four English teams in the final. This does not uh, agree with my, how to say, not my definition, but how I imagine a European final. This should pit two teams from different countries against each other. Yes, I'm an old school romantic in that case. So yeah, I said it all. After four, 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 45 minutes, we would have had another Spanish-Italian uh, final. And the second half put the Italians Squarely out of there. I mean, yes, it was a bit unlucky. We'll talk about it in a sec. Um, but yeah, United is through. And Arsenal gave themselves a fighting chance, although it looked even bleak for a second. Yeah, that's a lot of talk of me. Let's go. Let's talk United Roma because that game actually, as I said, the first half looked not that bad. Uh, the problem for Roma was that they had to make three substitutions already in the first half, which meant that there are no other substitutions possible in the second half. A huge disadvantage. And then when you see the players who needed to come off, where it too is, I think, essential for Roma's midfield. Um, then Mirante, when it was already 1-1, one, one, uh, does some, I know, uh, Paul Lopez uh, in, injures his, his shoulder. Yes, the goalkeeper needs to come on, new goal, goalie needs to come on, which is never a good uh, thing. But I have to say, Paul Lopez is not a great get, great get, get goalkeeper. But then also, Spinazzola comes off injured. That's where the two in Spinazzola. I mean, that's base, ba basically the spark in the midfield that um, Roma really has. And then you have no option in the second half to make any substitutions. 
big disadvantage and United pounced it. And it looked also well because um, despite Fernandes giving uh, um, United a lead, a penalty where, the, where Paul Pogba handled it, I think it cannot really discuss that, uh, that one, um, gives them 1-1 one, one to Roma and then Edin Dzeko um, stumbles one over, over the line after another Pelle, uh, after Pellegrini assist. So it really, really looked not that badly, but then you have this huge disadvantage with not having uh, any substitutions and anymore under a reserve goalkeeper and uh, two of your best midfield players are out. And United passed on that, as I said. Cavani, great finish, uh, both of them, um, in the 48th and 64th. And then uh, when the uh, when Bruno Fernandes gets a pen penalty where, yeah, I think it was a clumsy, a clumsy challenge by um, Smalling, you could see that the Roma, even the highlights, I mean, already the defending uh, got more lax and lax and lax, and the heads were hanging. The whole everything kind of collapsed on, on, on onto them. Uh, so Fernand converts the penalty of, a few minutes later. Pogba uh, heads in free header, and then Mason Greenwood adds another one. It was a rout, uh, as can be. And it's again uh, when Roma plays at Old Trafford, it doesn't end well. Or when Roma plays in England as as of late, it just does not end well. And this time for 45 minutes, I think they had a performance in them, but then... <whistles> and so, yeah, my favorite team in that competition, the, my favorite remaining team. I mean, I had two more that I was favoring, three more. I mean, Lask is already gone first round, um, already out. Second game, and you know, when I had to cho choose between those two, I already anticipated that United will make will get a clear win over Roma because Roma is not that great at the moment. So I was actually surprised that Roma was 2 1 up at the halftime. Um, so it was Villarreal Ar Arsenal, simply because of the you know, em Emery against Arsenal story, but also I thought this was way more even because Villarreal is really a good team within uh, La Liga and they have quite some players that can. Uh, get to you and uh, right from the get go, uh, fourth minute, uh, nice to Kwesi pass who was not offside um, to Trigueros. No, it was not actually Chukwesi on there. There was a few passes in there and then Chukwesi back to Trigueros who just takes a shot. And in the fifth minute, it is 1 0 for Villarreal. And then it was all Villarreal going, going, going forward. Uh, Gerard Moreno uh, with a nice header after, after corner assisting Raul Abiol make it 2 0. Um, and this was all well deserved. I think VRL really uh, got to Arsenal, and uh, the bad news didn't stop there. Uh, with Ceballos getting sent off of a second ye yellow card, how to say, a bit unlucky. I mean, he steps on the uh, player, but on the other side, he's mid run, he cannot really adjust there. So, maybe, maybe. Maybe you could argue, argue with that one, that it should not have been a yellow red. But then uh, two clear chances for Villarreal, where Chuko is, and especially Gerard Moreno, where Leno makes a good save and makes good on his mistakes that he, had, he has been having recently, um, really should have put Villarreal in the clear. However, a uh, penalty, and I would argue, argue this is not a penalty because you can see how Saka is looking for the, for, for, for the panel. Yes, there's contact, but he initiates the contact. I, I, I think of all the panels yes, yesterday given, this was, what was the one that I thought was not uh, right to be given. But you know, I can see also the argument for it to be given, but I felt this was the, it's really, he, uh, the fall is coming from Saka who is looking for the contact. Should not be one. Uh, in any case, Pepe pulls one back, then Capoe sending off and injuring himself in the process there. Um, and also Villarreal starting to hang back, which probably was not the right thing to do. I think Villarreal should, should have kept, kept it on the forefoot. And almost Aubameyang gets an equalizer. He came on in the 85th and had a huge chance in stoppage time. Probably should have gotten the equalizer there, which would have been a lucky escape. But even with the 2-1, I personally would favor Arsenal, although Villarreal, as I said, is not all that bad. If we look at the chances of um, moving on, I mean, United is through. Uh, it's an infinitesimal chance for Roma to make the comeback. Yes, they only need a 4-0, yeah, only. 
Roma is not gonna do that. Um, so United through and they have a 64% chance of winning. Villarreal, given the, the my model gives Villarreal the slight advantage over Arsenal to advance, not slight advantage, 62. 60-40 chance, uh, base they have a win and probably a draw will do with it. So I can see it. Uh, you need to win or a draw. Um, and, if, and if you have then, and then a 3-2 win or whatever. So I, I can see that the chances for Arsenal are slimish. Uh, but Arsenal is definitely favored to win at the M M Emirates. And I actually, I feel we will get a United Arsenal final as much as I don't want it. But... Um, you have to face the realities. And United, as I said, is probably gonna win that car competition barring a big collapse. So next week, I think on Thursday, it's all Arsenal, Villarreal, uh, Roma, United. There will be more goals in there, but I think Arsenal, Villarreal is the game to watch. What do you think about the uh, semi-finals in the Europa League? Uh, do you agree with me? There will be United, Arsenal final. That's my personal feeling. My model says uh, United, Villarreal. Which, yeah, I probably will take, but I think it will be United Arsenal. What are your thoughts on that? What do you think about the games yesterday? I maybe didn't mention it too much. I, I think that United paused and played brilliantly on it, but I think it really, uh, Roma situation largely contributed to, of, to, to, to be scoring. But uh, I think United, the goals that they played, especially the ones from Cavalli, were brilliantly played. So uh, that also has to be said, don't want to take away from United and say that it's because Roma was faltering. Roma was already the worst team anyway and got in even worse position. They probably would, would have lost the game uh, even without this, but they would not have lost 6-2. It would have been more like a 3-2 or whatever. That's my personal op or opinion, but uh, United did what they had to do. Put the game away and don't worry about it anymore and end the semi-final curse so i uh, was that was important to add to all that because i think what i said before yes i'm a roma fan so i'm maybe fo focusing more on that but uh we have to see it all a little bit more um uh differentiated there are always two sides to a result in any case let me know your thoughts give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel and see more and yeah i uh, maybe i will do a spain video because there were also some crazy things happening but first i have to get some work done and uh, feel a little bit better overall with all that bye if you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day bye